Hello, I'm Richard. And I'm Julio. And welcome to the IVF Daddies podcast. I think today is a different take on it. Today, I don't know how this is going to go because it's... Today's episode is not all about IVF and surrogacy. Today's about vulnerability because we were having a conversation in the lead up to this podcast about what we're going to talk about and all these different things because Julio doesn't like to wing it and he likes to plan things and have it all sketched out. But today's episode really was about what does it mean to be a family? I think that's how it started off at least and it was going to be about Julio joining in effect joining my family and how that must feel for him and different things and I think that kind of spiraled a little bit into a topic that I think is really important for us to discuss and for me the way that I'm thinking about it is I think that there is an anxiety level within what we are doing because of the fact that I have a family with my ex and we don't want to say the wrong thing we don't want to do the wrong thing and that we're always basically skirting around the subject and I think that brings a lot of what we're talking about now because for example when we were in Lisbon for Taylor Swift we put a post up that it was amazing and Julio said our daughter and that caused a stir within the fam my ex's family and I was asked to please refrain or ask Julio to refrain from calling my daughter and my ex's daughter his daughter which to me I think is I understand I disagree I think having somebody in my life that I love who loves my children as if they were his own is is so valuable and that should be celebrated not berated and I you know it is what it is I don't really want any comments on it because I don't think it's worth going down an argument route on that because I you know everyone's entitled to their opinion and I think that's their opinion and again it's a topic that I didn't really want to talk about because I don't want to go down that route. I don't want to get into an argument, but actually we have to talk about it because it's affecting Julio and not in a good way. And I think that's me talking. So Julio, over to you, really. Honestly, the whole point of this podcast is to hold myself accountable to be a better partner and a better uh, guardian for the kids. And I don't want to take anybody's position. I don't want to replace a parent. I just want to learn how to be a better boyfriend and a better integration to the family. I come from a parent, I come from a family that my parents divorced and remarried and remarried again and divorced again and remarried again. And I know the difference between stepmothers, a second mother, a stepfather and the wife of my dad. So every time we try to do the podcast and we go on the technical aspect of it, is really easy and simple but then when we want to get into the personal aspect of it it feels really hard and i didn't want to make it all about ibf this podcast because of of how hard it feels for us to get vulnerable and to talk about each other's feelings and i feel like we sometimes when we want to get to the point in situations like this that there is not such thing as right or wrong and then you're going to have people on your corner and then you're going to have people against you. We try to procrastinate doing other tasks that are not important. And sometimes when we have to sit down to talk about the podcast and add our own personality, because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a legal agency or anything, nor a journalist to, to interview people, I want to use this as the most cathartic is it cathartic? Cathartic. The most cathartic way to grow and learn and understand what it's like to go through the process. I can say that my position as a step parent and whether we're married or not or we're together or not, I feel like we're going to spend the rest of our li your life together or our lives together. But I, I am not going anywhere and I don't know if we need a paper or a document to have a family. But then this makes me realize if this is me being a step parent, 
being one of the most difficult things that I've done in my life or walking the tightest rope that I've ever walked, I cannot even imagine what it's like to wanting to have a family and not being able to achieve it and wanting to go to a sperm bank, wanting to go to an egg donor, wanting to try a different method and having the world or your family or anybody against you. And yeah, I feel that sometimes we have to agree on things and sometimes we have to raise kids that are not mine and sometimes we get backlash and sometimes I'm like, should I step back? Should I step in? Should I double down? Should I apologize? Is that part of life that you really don't have a right or wrong or a correct way of being is either show up and take it as it goes. And it's, it's been a little bit of emotional because I don't know what to do. And I don't like to say that if I'm doing it right or wrong, I just feel like I don't want to do or say something that is going to take a toll on you or criticize your parenting or your kids or our relationship. It's like sometimes I can fall in the category of a third child or sometimes I can fall in the category of a mean parent. And sometimes I feel like when you're a dad, you can snap on your kids and it's fine. When you're a stepfather, you can't. When I point things out, I have to think that I'm causing two effects. I am causing an effect and impact on the kid and I'm causing an effect on your parenting skills. And sometimes they don't go together, but the effect it is. And then you see all the weight that it takes is a lot easier to procrastinate and not sit down and do the podcast and talk about this. And I don't know how this is gonna turn out, if we're gonna end up fighting or not or crying. But I think this is important. In all honesty, I think that a reason of this podcast is because as much as I want a family, I don't know if I could go through the difficult process of what it takes to go. Oh my God. I don't know if I can go through the difficult process of what it takes to go through IVF and surrogacy. And I don't know. It's hard. It's really hard. And I think the reason you're doing or the reason we started this was for you to show up and to be a better boyfriend you said it right do you think that you're doing that i don't know well, i think you are it's okay because you know i'll cry if you cry it's you know? just really hard because there's a lot of things that we have to do and then i had to come out of town for work and then i didn't consider the kids being my kids and then not being with them started to affect me. And then now you're here with Zonder and then it's just balancing out spending time with him and doing things with him and doing, I don't know, it's just, it's really hard being a parent. It's really hard to be a parent and balance the responsibilities of work and life and parenting and giving that love that you have right it is really hard and just having to go i don't know it's just and then people that really want to be a parent have to have all these obstacles it's just is that what we were talking to our therapist is if you think being a gay parent is difficult try to be a gay step parent and your level of patience have to rise and then we have to do this podcast and we have to add personality to it and then why should people struggle and why should people that are really good at being parents and want to have another kid and they can't shouldn't be able to go through alternative routes i don't know i don't know how to diversify this and attach it to the podcast but this is more about a personal thing this is more about us coming together and talk about our situation. And yeah, it really affected me. It really affected me to hear that I shouldn't allow to call our kids what makes a kid yours. Because the way that I look at it, 
I celebrate the fact that you treat them so well. But it just, again, what would make them your kids if we got married? Then they'd be your stepchildren. What does that really mean from a legal perspective? It's just paperwork. Like when you have a child in your life and you love it unconditionally, that needs to be celebrated. Because when I was basically breaking up with my ex, I didn't think I, it wasn't. Finding somebody new was not the top of my priority list. And then when I was looking for somebody and you, not that I was even looking for somebody, I really wasn't, but you popped up. I think we've said this before on the podcast. You liked me for me. You liked me with the children. You like the children for the children. And that's only got stronger as time goes on. The anxiety level around the right or the wrong thing when you're parenting, we have every day because you worry about, or I don't, I, this is, and now this is me, I'm, I'm third personing, but I worry about whether or not I'm messing up my children and their lives. Like, am I doing the right thing? Am I too strict? Am I too grumpy? Am I really focusing on their manners too much? And should I just let them run wild and be children and do stuff? Or am I trying to be the person that gives them the ability to survive in life and not be viewed in a way that is negative. And we spoke about this ages ago on, on a, an episode that, that we didn't actually end up publishing because it became too much. But one of my things of parenting is, and I heard this, somebody was talking to Oprah about it, but it was about... I need to become obsolete in my children's lives as a parent. And that's when my job has been done properly, when they don't need me, but they want me. Mm -hmm. And that is giving them the skills to survive in life and get to the point where they're okay. Like uh, above and beyond anything, I want my children to be kind. Like just be nice, be kind. There is so much toxicity in this world that it's so easy to go to the negative. It's so easy just to berate people and say how bad they are and what they're doing wrong. But picking that positive, going to somebody and say, you're doing an amazing job. Like, why is that so hard? Yeah, it's like something, it's, it's like literally if you see something nice in somebody, you just speak on it. But how, right. when was the last time, like, you're walking down the street, you see someone who looks amazing. God, you look amazing. No, we're going to, have you seen their hair? Have you seen their shoes? Like, it's always picking the negatives. Yeah. And, and I, that drives me insane. So with my children, one of the things that I'm trying to do in, in their entire life is if you don't have anything nice to say, no. no. I can't even remember what it is now. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. Yeah, just shut up. Of course, it's just touching on other people's insecurity and a lot of people when they're hurt, they just bark louder and when they bark louder, we either get intimidated or, you know me, I will not be here to apologize, I'll be here to double down and I don't think is, I feel like what got me to say that these kids are my kids is when it came from their it came from their mouth when they said that they feel like they have three parents and that is the ultimate claim and that is when i decided to adopt it myself and i will always want to make sure that they know they can count on me for everything and as you said i grew up with parents that i needed to fail to earn their love and i was controlled financially and I had very authoritarian parents and I wasn't cared or loved properly and I felt like I wasn't hurt or I was alone my entire life. You showing up with the family is all I wanted and then now I have the family like Dolly Parton said if you want to put up with the rainbow you have to put up with the if you want to enjoy the rainbow you have to put up with the rain. I always say the kids have amazing parents and I always will say it, the kids have amazing parents and I'm not here to take anybody's place, but it's tough. It's tough when you have to do work. It's tough when you have to do the podcast. It's tough when you have to want to spend time with the kids and the kid is not is disappointed. It really hurts to hear a kid saying that you didn't show up for me when what we think we're doing is hard work for their future but in the end as a kid 
all you know is either you're present or you're not. Right. And for having the extra pressure of society, of the world, telling you that the way you should have your kid is like, who the F do you think you are to tell me if the way I want to have a family is the right way or the wrong way? And something that I've learned about this podcast is that the blueprint that I thought a family was changes every second. And like you've said it before, the people raised by their grandparents, the people raised with a family member, with parents that one parent dies or both parent dies or end up in foster care. When it comes to IVF and surrogacy and the toll it takes to try to get pregnant or understand what fertility is, or even understand where your own infertility is to try different routes. Some people get too late. And then on top of that, when you have the kids and you think that's gonna save a marriage or make it better or whatever, and the marriage just doesn't get better. And then you stay for the kids and then you end up being, I've seen lonelier couples than people that decided to take the leap and get a divorce or look for their happiness and it's not fair to change somebody it's not fair to change yourself or somebody else i guess the biggest drive that i have is that the kids want me in their life and you want me in your life and yeah it's tough it's tough when you cannot be a hundred percent everything yeah it's really tough and i saw it when Xander was like, can we play Roblox? And you were like, yes, but I've got a work call. Like, it's tough. It's crushing when you have to learn how to prioritize and compromise and do stuff. And you see the disappointment. Yeah, mm. it's hard. But that doesn't mean he doesn't love you any less. In fact, I think, again, it's teaching them that, unfortunately, we can't only do what we want to do. Sometimes you have to do things we don't want to do that a lot of people struggle to understand that because parenting is really hard. It's not a walk in the park and the reward is it's exponential. When your child hugs you and kisses you and says they love you, you don't need to be a biological parent for that to happen. Like I have that with my godparents. I have it with my children. I have it with you. You have it with my children. Yeah. Like that's huge. And I think a lot of people miss that. And again, it comes into celebrating the love. Like why shouldn't they think of you as a parent? That just pisses me off. I'm sorry. It just annoys me because I classify you as somebody in their lives that I would trust implicitly. And I think my ex does too. And I think it was just a knee jerk reaction and it's just not, Again, it's, it just wasn't a very kind one, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And it's got to, it's got to, and this is for anybody who's coming into a, a, a family with children, be it from a broken home, be it from a situation where one part, partner's died, whatever it is, it's a really fine line to tread. You've got to be super careful what you say, what you do, because your actions will impact those children for their entire life not only the children but the parents of the children as well yeah but the parents hopefully have thicker skin we don't always we try yeah at the end of the day i just don't think why would it's hard to understand why would anybody be upset when somebody wants the best for your kid and just for anybody to criticize single parents or stay-at-home parents or as long as you're not harming your kids as long as you're not abusing them I don't know, I think I'm rambling, but it's just, it's really difficult to do a podcast when it becomes more personal and then trying to balance relationship, kids, work. I think you should get a second job so I can just be more present with the kids. So we can have two salaries now. It could be me doing both. Yeah. Yeah. No. I like to think of myself as a glass half full kind of guy, but sometimes the glass is empty. Mm -hmm. And I think this is one of those situations where it, the situation just sucks and there's things that we can try to do to be positive about it. And we can highlight 
different families and what we're doing, but sometimes the situation just isn't great. And well, you've got to- I mean, there, there, I mean, there is, there's a tough part of it, and then there is great part of it. There's a lot of things that I'm doing that I would have not put in the effort because I wouldn't need it to, but now I do. And so I'm building up a patisserie here in Ibiza, and now I just feel like I'm winning points every time I send them a picture of the cakes that we're making, and they're just so wowed by it. Or when you guys came the other day and had breakfast, and it was just so excited and, and happy of everything he ate. It's just there is a reward for the job and the sacrifice that you do by not spending time with them. And I guess it's the f- first time that I've used the word sacrifice in our relationship because I feel like compromising for me is an investment and to create in space for the both of us, but not being present. I didn't know it was going to take a toll like it does. And that it does feel like a sacrifice in the family because they just had an acting challenge, an acting class or, that I missed. It was tough. And having you say to me that Sandra was disappointed that I couldn't have enough time to play roles with him, it, it, it wasn't good. Or hearing Lulu calling on the phone saying that she didn't want to go on a trip, she'd rather be with us. It, it, it hurts, but then again, you think of, you can't give them everything they, like, it's just like, this hurt that you have to experience to learn more about life. It's just, it's so easy to want to overprotect your kids. It's so easy to want to save them from everything. It's just so fucking tough. Just people stop being mean or let people have their families however they want to have it. I'm over it. I feel like it's difficult to have time for yourself because you need time for yourself to be a better person for your kids and to have a little bit in the tank for your partner at night. And yet we come from a very privileged position because there are people who have nothing, right? And they struggle to do even... Are we suffering because we have too much? Sometimes I feel like we're drowning in freedom and maybe if we had less options too. And And we're really damn lucky. Like we're really lucky. Yeah. And I think these are total first world problems. But at at the same time, like I'll come back to it. It's like my children are loved... And they are loved deeply by three parents. And that to me is all I could ever wish for. Who, which child does, which child has to go to the therapist when they're older to say, my God, my parents loved me too much. Because if they do, I'm like, okay. And so for us, when we started going to therapy, saying that we want to go to therapy because we want to make this work. Because he's got lots of issues. Lots. Yeah, like a magazine. One issue every month. You've never heard that? Wow. Like Vogue. Yeah. I didn't want to plug a brand, but you did. Madonna. Oh, my God. Yes. So today's episode is all about that. It's not about IBF. It's about us and how we juggle our days and our careers and having putting thought into creating content for the podcast. And sometimes we feel like this side of the content is irrelevant. It's not just creating the baby. It's like, what happened after you have kids of 11 years old and you start a new relationship and then you see these kids growing and then you miss things and then we'll We'll leave it with you there. We don't know. We hope we're doing a good job with the children. I think we are. I think you are. It's hard. There are days, there are up days, there are down days. And I think that's part and parcel of why you're liking, subscribing, and commenting on our podcast. And let us know if you feel like you relate to any of this or this got a little too personal. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for coming to our therapy session. (laughs) (laughs) Goodbye.